Welcome to Chariots. You are riding Route Number 5A, Lancaster Mall. I am Keith Rosentrader, currently an operations supervisor here at Chariots. I started out as an operator, a driver, and did that for a little over five years, and then I've been doing supervisor stuff ever since then. Music and actually singing is a, has been an important part of my life since childhood. I've, I've done a sung in church, sang in a quartet in college, and traveled around the country. And then a number of years, I was involved in uh, leading worship and directing choirs in church. For your safety, do not cross in front of the bus after exiting. Wait until the bus departs before crossing. The reason that we started announcing stops was because the Congress passed the Americans with Disabilities Act in the very early 90s. There was a need for people riding the bus that were not able to hear or see. They needed to know where they were. It was either have the operators make all of those announcements verbally or have the system that would do it automatically. For those that had hearing impairments, they could see the sign that, that scrolled across the text of what the announcement was saying. When we started using what's called the talking bus, announcing stops, that software initially came on while I was still a driver. And the first voice of Chariots was uh, a lady who was in the general manager's office. And then over time, she moved on, she retired. Then there came a time when the routes had changed. Much of what was on that system no longer was applicable. And they approached me to see if I would be interested in taking that task on. So I thought, yeah, sure, that'd be kind of fun. Until I sat down with the equipment, realized the software was DOS-based, which I had never worked with. Fortunately, one of the mechanics had some considerable experience with computer programming. So the two of us kind of worked together. We had to go in and re-record every single announcement that had been in the female voice, plus all of the new ones we needed, and put it all together. Center and 13. When the talking bus system first came out, the system had to be triggered by the operator. So you'd come up on a stop and you'd reach over and hit uh, the next stop button and it would make the announcement. Prior to 2000, us moving into Courthouse Square, we were on an island in front of the courthouse. Buses go in both directions on High Street and there was no rhyme or reason as to how they parked. With the talking bus system, it allowed those that were sight impaired to walk down the line and find their bus. Then it became tied to a GPS system. Keith goes out and does the programming with the GPS and one of the supervisor cars and ran around and put all the trigger points in. He has to manually make the recording and then it has to be put into the digital program on the computer and then it has to be matched to where it needs to be triggered. Center and Capital. So the talking bus system was efficient in a way, but preparing for any changes that needed to be made was not so efficient. Particularly when there were many, many changes to be made. At one point we added routes, we changed names of routes, and so in that particular situation I probably spent a week and a half every single day working with this little laptop with rather ancient software on it. We are approaching Courthouse Square. Uh, one of my sons several years ago was riding the bus and a talking bus announcement came on and the person he was with was kind of listening to it and, and my son said, that's my dad. I said, no, it's not. So they actually got into a verbal argument about the fact of whether that was actually my voice or not. I've heard from a few people that are out in the system that I know when the bus pulls up, the, the door opens and, and the outside speaker announces the stop. One of my friends from church has commented a couple times, hey, you woke me up again this morning, so <laughs> he recognized my voice. People that have never met Keith Rose and Trader, if he were walking down the street and spoke, would go, that's, that's the bus. That's the guy that talks on the bus. Because so many people in this town have heard his voice. And I think it's just kind of a voice of comfort. So Chariots has recently purchased and finally completed installation of an entirely new system on the buses, which replaces the talking bus, but adds a, a whole new dimension in other areas as well. It's called CAD. AVL, Computer Assisted Dispatch, and Automatic Vehicle Locator. That system has an automatic voice announcing system, which will replace the talking bus with a computer-generated voice, 
and many more tools for the dispatchers to use to identify where every bus in the system is. Eventually, our customers will also be able to log on to an app to see where their bus is and how soon it will arrive at their stop. So it'll be a great advantage to them as well. The one thing I really, really appreciate about Chariots is we're still a family company. And I know for Keith, it's gonna be a really hard day. He will have been here 30 years. Keith has made such an impact on this district. For anybody that's been here, even my latest class that graduated, that voice is gonna be missed. It's really been a, a, a privilege and, and a fun task uh, over the years to be uh, the voice of Chariots through the talking bus, knowing that it's, uh, it's helping our customers, uh, knowing that it communicates information uh, that they need. And so I would just say this to those of you that have uh, gotten accustomed to my voice over the years, a phrase that you hear often, and that's, thank you for riding chariots.